Well, put on your super thick glasses and pull your pants up to your armpits, nerds, because it's time to buckle up. We've got some good information for you. We're talking pitch efficiency today. It's time to get Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you want to give back to the show and help out the Super Halo Bros, here's how you can do that. You can leave a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed, be a subscriber and a locked on every day or with us. And whether you're watching or listening, come on over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's the best way to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. And today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. And right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started. Thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, aka the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, you and I are so appreciative of our Locked On Everydayers who join us every single Monday to, through Friday to talk Angels baseball. And I want to give a special shout out to our friend Barbara in Florida. She yeah. calls and leaves us voicemails and always get shares her thoughts with us. And the last time she called, she said, I don't know if I'm still your favorite. And Barbara, you're still our favorite. Never question, Barbara. Never question. Never you question also said that. that you were maybe not going to be an Angels fan, but look, you're calling us. You're watching the show. It's always in there. It's somewhere <laughs> in there, Barbara. Can't turn it off, right? <laughs> no, but honestly, every voicemail that we get, whether it makes a show or not, just so you guys know, we we do listen to those and we take the feedback that comes with those as well. And we respond off the air to John and I. It just helps our, our brother to brother conversations and our totally, relationship. <laughs> totally. Yeah. You're making, you're making the Halo bros better bros. At the end of the day. <laughs> there it is. Mike, <laughs> on today's show, I'm very excited. I put my nose to the grind and got into the details and the numbers and the data. And I think I've come to some really good conclusions about pitch efficiency. Yeah. When it comes to the angels. Now on today's show, we're going to look at six different starts Two each for Tyler Anderson, Reed Detmers, Patrick Sandoval. One inefficient start and one efficient start. Essentially, yep. their worst and best performances of 2023. And I'm going to get into why that was and how they did it and how they accomplished it, whether it was good or bad. And I think it's a really important conversation because we look at the starting pitching and we often see like eh, five innings. Yeah, that, that was fine. And guys just don't go eight complete innings anymore, even a complete game anymore. Right. So I think this conversation is really important to have now, Mike, I'm not going to tell you what I'm starting with here with your boy Reed Detmer. So I just want to read this line to you. Okay. And you tell me if it was a efficient start or an uh -huh. inefficient start. Okay. You ready for this? Yes. Three hits, mm -hmm. one unearned run. Two walks and seven Ks for Reed Detmers. Oh man, three hits, one unearned run, two walks, seven Ks. Uh, I, because <laughs> because they're seven Ks, I'm sure he probably threw a uh, buttload of pitches. That's <laughs> yes. the official term, right? This, this was the inefficient start. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna say this has got to be inefficient. Yeah, this was uh, September 20th against the Tampa Bay Rays. Okay, four innings pitched, Ugh. 96 pitches. He got a no decision, but the Angels did win this one eight to three. This is a pull your hair out start for Reed Detmers this last year. I'll read this line again. Three okay. hits, one unearned run, two walks, and seven Ks. By all means, it sounds great, but when you see that it's four innings pitched over 96 pitches, yeah. here's how that broke down. The first inning, 19 pitches across three at-bats. Hmm. The second inning, 24 pitches across five at-bats. Wow. And third inning, 23 pitches across six at bats. Finally, the fourth inning, 30 pitches across five at bats. Hmm. So if you break that down and kind of average everything out, 96 pitches across 19 at bats, 5.05 pitches per at bat on average. Wow. 4.75 at bats per inning. So Dang. four and three quarters of a player coming to the plate in each yeah. inning that he pitched. In this so one. not a one, two, three inning, which is obvious with how many pitches he threw. Correct. Uh, Johnny, the question then is, okay, so this is an inefficient start. What, what caused him to throw 96 pitches in just four innings? Because 
gosh, like that, that doesn't seem very efficient, does it? Right. No, no, certainly not. <laughs> what happened in that game? Let's talk about three ball counts. So whether okay. it was uh three and oh, three and one, three and two, Mikey had seven at bats with three ball counts uh-huh. in this game. Wow. Uh, one versus Yandy Diaz. This one was zero and two, and then three and two. Gosh, it how ended many up being. Did we see that this mm-hmm. year? Gosh. Exactly, exactly. It ended up being a flyout, but it was six pitches total. Okay. Uh, Taylor Walls. It went from zero and one to three and one, then mm. three and two, and ended up as a strikeout, six pitches total. Versus Manuel Margot, it was one and two to three and two mm. that ended in a single on seven pitches. Yandy Diaz was down zero and one to. Four straight balls for a walk, oh, uh, five total pitches. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Walls again, uh, it went to a full count and he K'd on a foul tip in six pitches. Brandon Lowe, it was a two and oh count, two and one, two more balls for a walk, five pitches. And then, of course, you knew this was coming. Randy Arozarena, uh, he had a full count, three and two, then two more foul balls, then a swinging strikeout for hmm. eight pitches. So 38 pitches total were spent on these seven at bats wow with three ball counts so wow one a little over one third of his pitches in this game were in at, at bats with three ball counts so what i heard in you as you shared those those numbers is i heard foul ball a mm-hmm. lot <laughs> and and he like gosh man he had so many so many opportunities to maybe strike a guy out or maybe throw another strike but it seemed like with the rays specifically they were making contact not Fair contact, but foul contact. Is that what happened in this game? That's totally what happened because the Rays have a zone swing percentage, meaning they're swinging at pitches in the zone of 68.8%, which is good for eighth in the league. Did you know that the Halos are actually, I believe they were top five in zone swing percentage. Hmm. Believe it or not, even though Hunter Renfro was on the team, they were top five in zone swing percentage. (laughs) So yeah. 68.8% of the time they're swinging at pitches in the zone. They're also seventh in the league in swing percentage at 49.2. So no matter what the pitch was in the zone, mm. out the zone, they're swinging basically 50% of the time. League average is 47.5. Wow. So the Rays here extended their at-bats and kept their at-bats alive against Detmers by fouling off pitches. There were 29 total foul balls, an additional seven came with two strikes. In fact, let me give you an example here of Detmers versus Harold Ramirez. Now, if you're watching on TV or if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see the graphic here. But for those on the audio side, I'm going to do the best I can to just kind of run you through this at bat of Detmers versus Harold Ramirez. First pitch is a curveball for a called strike, two foul balls, a ball, two more foul balls, Then finally, a forcing fastball that was put in play that was a pop-out by Harold Ramirez. So between being ahead 0-2, again, the curveball, then a foul ball, then there's five more pitches after that. Uh, Not to mention there were two fielding errors that day that gave Tampa extra at-bats. So that made for a very short Detmers day, Mike, (laughs) in Tampa Bay, unfortunately for Reed Detmers. Now, the efficient game, and this is a a frustrating one because it was the 20th of June against the Dodgers, seven innings pitched, 98 pitches, a no decision. This is the game where Kershaw said Detmers was the better pitcher Hmm. that night, and I happen to agree. Here's how that one broke down. Two hits, no runs, one walk, eight Ks, and he averaged, let's see, 98 pitches across 24 at-bats, about four pitches per at-bat on average. And then 3.42 at bats per inning. That was okay. the average there. So, so looking back at what he did in his inefficient start, he averaged five pitches per at bat, and and then had 4.7 at bats per inning. And mm-hmm. then in this in this efficient start, what were those numbers again? Uh, four point pitches, so one less pitch. Okay, and basically a batter and a half. Wow, less at bats in this efficient. Well, no start. wonder he went seven innings in this game. Right. <laughs> How many three ball counts were there? Well, there were five at bats with three ball counts. One okay. walk to Freeman, a fly out to Miguel Vargas, a single to Will Smith. That went three and zero, then three and one, then a single. One to James Altman. It ended up being a full count strikeout, and then one to Freddie Freeman again, mm. a three and two ground out on seven pitches, but. Here's what Detmers did well. He yeah. mixed his speeds 
and he messed with the hitter's timing. He worked up and down in the strike zone and in and out of the strike zone. So mm. he's changing the eye level. And then, Mike, the curveball and the fastball really messed with the Dodgers' timing, causing ground outs and a lot of flyouts. Was this the game where he said that him and Matt Wise worked together before and and adjusted himself? Or am I thinking of a different game? I think that came later, okay. honestly. You're probably yeah. right. But this is one of those games where you saw him come out and, and be the guy that we saw him be last season, especially after he was sent down and came back. And this was one of those games where you're like, yeah, there he is. Mm-hmm. That's who he is, right? And he struck out Mookie Betts three times yeah, in this yeah. one. Um, I do have a graphic here. And again, okay. I'll describe that for those on the audio side. But here's his at bat versus Freddie Freeman. Uh, he's up 2-0 and after, or 0 and 2 after uh, two foul balls, uh, three balls in a row on two sliders and a curve ball then a foul ball, then another slider for the ground out. But Mike, I want you to pay attention over on the left side where you see the strike zone. And you can see that he's mixing his pitches inside, outside. Hmm. He plays the four seam fastball off the curve ball. He's got, he's mixing the slider in there as well. So you can see he tried to get Freddie to chase two sliders out of the zone, which ended up being balls. But then he put that slider in the zone and that's the one that Freddie grounded out on. And yeah. of course, that came after a 95, 96 mile an hour fastball. Freddie's geared up for the fastball and Detmers throws him the 87 mile an hour slider and caused him to ground out. So you could see that he's mixing his pitches so much more uh, efficiently. He's trying to work inside and outside and up and down the strike zone. I think this is a really good example of Reed Detmers starting an efficient start and especially yeah. against a tough Dodgers team is so frustrating that he didn't get the win in that one and that the yeah. angels lost that one. Davinsky actually was the losing pitcher in that one. Do you remember yeah. that? Notice, notice, notice the, the slider speed as well. The slider speed was not as, as strong. And as you can see in this at bat that you're showing on the screen right now against uh, Freddie Freeman, the, the last pitch was a slider 86. Mm-hmm. And he said when he throws it a bit softer, not as hard, it's more effective. And you can see that it was effective and his, his spin was a bit down, but you can see the vertical break was, was uh, better than his sliders earlier in the at bat that were 88 mm-hmm. miles an hour. It actually had a, a, a three inch vertical break more when he threw it a bit softer. And so that's when Reed Detmers is really effective. I I love these stats because it gives us some insight as to why the angels pitchers were ineffective and, and didn't really succeed like they could have this past season. And here's a great start. Great example of, of what he can do when he's focused and when he has a great game plan. Absolutely. Hey, coming up on lockdown angels, we're going to talk about Tyler Anderson and what he did well in a start against the Guardians, where he went eight innings. Hmm. And we're also going to talk about Patrick Sandoval and where he struggled this season. We'll get into all of that coming right up. Locked on Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. October baseball is a whole lot of fun, and you can join in on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Join today, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, create a new account, and then you can get in on all the action from the first pitch to the final out. You can bet on everything from strikeouts to home runs. <laughs> Watch the Phillies game and just bet on home runs. You're going to no win kidding. every single time, right? Those guys are incredible. And you can also bet on who's going to win the game and then i love this john you don't have to wait to see who's going to win the game you can predict what will happen in the next at bat with quick bets mm-hmm. so head over to fandle.com slash locked on right now and you can step up to the plate this postseason with 200 dollars in bonus bets guaranteed you can make every moment more with fanduel they're the official sports betting partner of major league baseball we're, we're going phillies rangers right is that is that oh, that'd be fan, that'd be fantastic that's, a, that's bet on it right now fan i'm going right now Get get that phone out. No, we got a show to do. Oh, sorry. Sorry. (laughs) Pay attention. (laughs) Thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. Lockdown Everydayers, of course, you can join us for Fan Mail Friday. Get your questions in because we love answering your questions. Sure, you have a lot to say about all of the offseason discussion around Shohei Otani and What's next for the Angels coming into 2024? We'd love to get your questions. You can reach us at Lockdown Angels on Twitter, at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. You can also call our voicemail line like our favorite Barbara from Florida. You can call our voicemail line anytime that number is in the episode description below. 
Johnny, let's talk about Tyler Anderson. His inefficient game was against the Astros. <laughs> Must have been hard to pick uh, one inefficient game from this past <laughs> season. But the one that you selected was from July 16th, and it was against the Astros. Three innings pitched, 85 pitches, and a no decision. I just was thinking about the tweet from uh, a Locked On Every Day or that said, man, Tyler Anderson would be a Cy Young winner if he could just go three innings. <laughs> right? like, yeah. He would be yeah. fantastic. So, Johnny, in this game, he gave up five hits. One earned run, two walks, five Ks, and he had one hit by pitch. First inning, 35 pitches and seven Ooh. at bats. Second inning, that was a classic first inning for him. 18 pitches in the second inning with four people coming to the plate, and then 32 with six people coming to the plate in the third inning. 85 pitches across 17 at bats, five pitches per at bat on average, 28 pitches per inning. That's not good that's <laughs> on average point, yeah <laughs> yeah that's 5.66 uh, 66 at bats per inning johnny what what's the problem especially from this one particular game yeah when you're going against the astros you're not going to do a lot of damage against them as a starting pitcher if you're throwing a lot of non competitive pitches mike Gosh, and what we mean season, by yeah. non competitive is the fact that there are fastballs and changeups being grooved right down the middle of the strike zone where it's easy for anybody from uh, from Kyle Tucker to Martin Maldonado to hit those pitches right. and knock them out of the park. And right. that was the problem here with Tyler Anderson, non-competitive pitches that get hit. They extend the inning because it brings right. up the next batter mm -hmm. or even pitches that are still non-competitive that are easy to lay off of. And they extend it bats. And I understand that sometimes a pitcher will try to go out of the zone to get people to chase and to get people to swing and miss or think that something else is coming in on the next pitch. That's all part of the psychology of being a starting pitcher. But really, in this one, Tyler Anderson didn't even have those kinds of pitches. And yeah. Really, the most, or I should say, the biggest culprit here was an ineffective changeup. And mm. If you remember, his changeup was his main weapon yeah. in 2022, and it was bad this year. In fact, let me pull up a graphic here. This is Tyler Anderson versus Kyle Tucker. And again, I'll describe this for those on the audio side, but Anderson here is trying to use a fastball changeup combo to get guys to swing and miss rather than throw his changeup down for guys to either swing over it or hit it on the ground. And you can see that dead center of the strike zone. You see that the first pitch is outside or down in the ground. Uh, the changeup is right there in the middle for strike yeah. for a swinging strike. Uh, he throws a sinker, another four seam. He throws another changeup and these four seams and changeups. I understand what he's trying to do. He's trying to get guys geared up for another fastball. And then he throws the changeup so that they're out in front of it. But the problem is this isn't working. It's yeah. It, these guys are recognizing it. And you see there that Kyle Tucker on the seventh pitch of the at bat, it's a meatball. Go, <laughs> it's a meatball. Pitch number seven is a four yeah. seam fastball. He hits it the other way out to Taylor Ward. Again, uh, Kyle Tucker is a lefty. So he hit it out to left field the opposite way. It scored Mauricio Dubon, Dubon and Alex Bregman goes to second on this one. But Mike, you can see right there that he's trying to go change up, fastball, change up, fastball, like get yeah. these guys in between on their timing. Yeah. And it's not working. And I actually pulled some stats for Tyler Anderson okay. regarding his change up. Uh, do you want to share those 2022 versus yeah. 2023 stats? These are really interesting. Start with that batting average against. Yeah, this is fascinating. Batting average against in 2022 against the change up 179. This last season, 238. Mm -hmm. The slugging percentage in 2022, 262. This last season, 381. Yeah. That's that's awful. <laughs> and Mike, it's because the changeup is right there in the middle of the zone. It's and a meatball. We've, seen, yep. we've seen those meatball pitches from Tyler Anderson all season long where he's trying to mix the fastball and the changeup mm. in the same spot, and mm. it doesn't work. It's yeah. not working. What he yeah. needs to get back to is something more like this efficient game against the guardians on September 9th, where he had eight innings pitched 97 pitches. It was a hmm. win. He went eight innings and then Carlos Estevez came in to close it down. Uh, really strong eight innings. 
in this one. Uh, again, four hits, two earned runs. They were both solo home runs. One walk, that's another thing that yeah. uh, he really struggles with. Yep. And then you notice one less strikeout than that Astros game yeah. because he's not tr- he's not a strikeout guy. No. And and that's what he's trying to do with that fastball changeup combination. Yeah. And that's the issue with Anderson this so year. So what did he do well in this game then uh, versus the other game? This one, he induced a lot of flyouts, a lot of ground outs, a lot of line outs. Okay. Uh, and he brought in the cutter this time. In fact, yeah. I wrote it down because uh, I was really interested in this. Mike, in the Astros game, he threw 37 four-seam fastballs, 36 changeups, and 11 cutters. In this game, the efficient game, he threw his four-seam fastball 49 times. Mm. He threw the changeup or he threw the cutter 27 times and the changeup only 15 times. So he threw wow. the cutter more okay. than the changeup in this one. When it gets uh, to trends, typically probably what they have video on, and he probably went against that, which is maybe why the, the Guardian struggled against him. Made the adjustment. The cutter, he worked the edges of the zone both in on the hands and running away from the hitter three times, Mike, he got miles straw to fly out Mm. on the cutter because it was running in on his hands, whether it was the first pitch or like the third pitch in this game, he threw that cutter in on miles straw's hands and got him to pop out. And that was what was really efficient. This was in addition to mixing the fastball and the changeup into that. Let me show you a graphic of Tyler Anderson versus Steven Kwan. He shows Kwan the cutter twice in the first two pitches. The first one's a ball. The second one's a called strike. He went inside with the sinker for a ball. Then he went away with the fastball. And then Quan ends up swinging at pitch number five, a four seam fastball thinking it's going to be one of those cutters that runs in and catches the end of the zone. But instead of coming in toward him, it just went straight. And even though it would have been a ball, he got Stephen Kwan to swing at it because Kwan had cutter in the back of his head. Mm. He thought that that was what Anderson was going to do. Ended up being uh, a ground out for Tyler Anderson against Stephen Kwan. So again, if you're looking at this graphic on, on TV or on YouTube, you can see he put those cutters at the top of the zone, outside the zone. And remember, Kwan is a lefty and Anderson is a lefty. So these cutters are running away from him and again it looks like anderson really fooled kwan with that last fastball thinking it was going to be a cutter that was running away from him instead it was a straight fastball that he swung at and ended up grounding it out so Hmm. really interesting stuff from tyler anderson in that efficient start again eight innings pitched mike that is unreal when it comes to tyler anderson tyler anderson needs to pitch intellectually That's really what this boils down to. He's not going to overpower anybody. He needs to pitch intellectually, similar to how Greg Maddox was successful, right? Mm -hmm. And change speeds. And that's when he's going to be really, really successful. Absolutely. And and he can't keep trying to mix the fastball and the change up and get guys to swing and miss on stuff in the zone because that clearly is just not working for him. Locked on Angels is brought to you by Bird Dogs. I got the solution for Angels pitchers, John. They just need to wear Bird Dogs because they're super comfortable. Bird Dog not... uniforms. Wouldn't that be great? Not like, not like right? cotton uniforms. Not like Not cotton field. uniforms. They're going to shrink. But Bird Dog uniforms, they're going to be fantastic because the players, if they wanted to, you know, get fat, they wouldn't have to worry about the Bird Dog <laughs> uniforms because those uniforms would fit them. They wouldn't have to fit into the uniforms. And that's what I love about Bird Dogs is they make you look good, whether you have a little bit of uh, – Uh, extra emphasis around the weight area. You can still feel good and look good in your bird dogs, whether you get pants or shorts, they're there to help you out and you can wear them anywhere on the golf course, out on the day to a business meeting. And so go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB, get yourself a pair of pants and a pair of shorts. I know a locked on every day or just the other day said, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to bird dogs. And they entered our promo code locked on MLB and they got a free water bottle and you can be as cool as us. And as cool as that locked on every day and wear your bird dogs everywhere. Again, birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. When you check out, use our promo code locked on MLB for a free water bottle. You're not going to want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. You know, I know you're always talking about fitting into your bird dogs, and I know you're talking about me. But if you uh, (laughs) consider somebody like my father-in-law, super fit, super athletic, he's also uh, wearing bird dogs and he's very comfortable in those as well. So they, they fit everybody, you guys. And like Mike said, you're not going to want to take your bird dogs off. All right, let's go 
One more pitcher, John, and your boy Patrick Sandoval is somebody that really had a tough season and somebody yeah. that wasn't supported behind him with the unearned runs. His inefficient game came from May 20th against the Twins. He went four and two thirds innings, 104 pitches. Good grief. And he <laughs> lost. He lost that game. Five hits, three earned runs, four walks, three Ks. 104 pitches across 23 at bats. That's 4.5 pitches per at bat on average. 22.6 pitches per inning average. Johnny, what went wrong with yeah, the boy? Let, let me just, I gotta, I gotta do this for everybody. The first inning, he threw 30 pitches in seven at bats, 25 yeah. across six at bats in the second, 13 across three in the third, which is good. And then 18 across three in the fourth. And then the fifth, which was two thirds of an inning, 18 pitches across four at bats. And Mike, I, I, I just want to put this graphic up. And you tell me what went wrong hmm. with Patrick Sandoval. <laughs> and if you're watching, wow. uh, you can obviously see the issue. But if you're on the audio side, look at all the pitches yeah. outside of the strike zone. It's amazing yeah. that there were only four walks in this one. I guess it was only four and two-thirds innings, so there wasn't a lot of innings to walk people. <laughs> and so, But again... Yeah. Look at all the pitches. It doesn't matter which one, the slider, the four scene, the change up, the curveball, tons of pitches outside the strike zone. And here's another issue, Mike, and I, I don't have a graphic for this one because I feel like I can just describe it to you. Sandy has this tendency to throw the same pitch multiple times yeah. Yeah. in a row, yep. and it results in walks. It results in hits because you kind of expect it once he's shown it to you two, three, four times in a row. How about this one? There's a there's an at-bat to Byron Buxton in this one where he throws a changeup in the dirt and then four straight sliders where only one landed in the zone. Wow. You think, wow, if he's throwing me that slider two times in a row, is he going to throw it again and then again? Well, normally you think, no, nah, probably not. He'll probably mix in a pitch. No, he threw four straight sliders. He's committed. <laughs> to Byron Buxton and Buxton was like, fine, I won't yeah. swing at anything. Even though you did hit the zone once, I don't care. I, I don't have to swing until I'm at two strikes. And that's exactly what Buxton did. He yep. walked in this one. And then Mike, how about this one? Four straight fastballs to Kyle Garlic in this game. Wow. It did get a ground out, but it honestly, it, it was at the top of the zone and away when Garlic swung at it and it ended up being a ground out, but mm. it, it felt like a hope. And a prayer, like, I'm just going to throw pitches and see what happens. And as I got into the numbers and got into the graphic that I just showed you, and then the fact that he threw four straight sliders to Byron Buxton, Mike, doesn't Sandoval pitch? Doesn't it feel like he pitches with a hope and a prayer? Yeah. It does not seem like he yeah. has a game plan. And it hit me like a freight train. I was like, yeah. Patrick Sandoval does not have a game plan. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sandy used to work on the dock and uh, ha he's halfway there living on a prayer. Right. And so <laughs> I hate that's so that much. <laughs> 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 All right. Let me move on. Let's talk about the, that efficient game against the Yankees. It was in July on the 18th, seven and one third, 99 pitches. He got a win, two hits, one earned run, three walks, seven Ks. Johnny, I, I think I know what he did well against the Yankees, but mm -hmm. but uh, could could you tell us? And then I'm going to see if I was right. Yeah, it's it's ground outs, Mike. Yeah, well, 12, 12 yep. ground outs in this one. Now they I understand made contact. Yeah, the like like they they were very much struggling the Yankees at this point, point. Um, and so they they were not the Yankees with Aaron Judge at this point. But he got 12 ground outs, and how did he do it? He mixed his pitches mm. and he wasn't throwing four straight sliders in a row. In fact, if you see this graphic from Patrick Sandoval versus DJ LeMayhew, uh, locked on every day or is watching on TV can see that in the strike zone, those five pitches are all different and they're all different parts of the zone. He's got the four seam fastball low and away. He's got the change up in the dirt for a ball. He's got a sinker that's outside for a ball. He threw the curveball that was fouled off. Then he threw the slider in on the hands to DJ LeMahieu, and it was in the zone, but LeMahieu grounds out on it. And again, five different pitches over a five pitch at bat. And mm. so LeMahieu didn't have any idea what was coming here. And, and that's not to say that when you throw the same pitch back to back, 
Um, he did that inefficiently against Byron Buxton, but he did do that in this game as well. He threw a slider, got a chase and said, all right, well, if they're going to chase it, I'm going to throw it again. And that's exactly what Sandoval did in this start against the Yankees. So again, Patrick Sandoval can seem aimless and without a game plan, but in that start against the Yankees, he was mixing pitches inside, outside, raising the eye level, making them look down at the knees. Somebody needs to sit down with Patrick Sandoval and make sure that he has a game plan and not only have one, but be able to carry it out during the start, right? Yeah, yeah. And and it seemed like the, the common theme for each of these guys is they mix their pitch, they watch their speeds, mm-hmm. and they're, pit- they're pitching intellectually. They're pitching like smart pitchers pitch. And, and those are the three things that are needed for Detmers, for Sandy, and for Anderson. And they're getting ahead in counts, yep. too. That's the biggest thing, is these guys yep. get into 0-2 and counts, and then suddenly it's three and two and then the the at bat gets uh, away from them and they either walk somebody or there's seven more pitches in the at bat that are totally unnecessary at the end of the day hey thanks for making locked on angels your first listen of the day buckle up nerds what a great episode this was to learn about pitch efficiency and you can respond to it by giving us some questions and some thoughts for fan mail friday john how can they reach out to us yeah get at us at locked on angels on twitter at super halo bros on twitter and Instagram, if you're watching on YouTube or maybe you're listening on the audio side, come on over to YouTube, find this episode, and comment below. We love having you come into our conversation and hear your thoughts. It's the best way that you can get a hold of us is those YouTube comments because we look at them every day. We do our best to respond to everybody. So let us know what you what you observed, what you've noticed, and if what we said here actually makes sense. Again, I, I'm totally sold on the fact that Sandoval does not have a game plan when he struggles out there on the mound. Hey, Mike, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Man, the list of all the pitchers that had to have some version of Tommy John is ridiculous. So we're going to give you that list, including Shohei Otani, and then ask the question, why? Why is this happening? Mm. We're going to talk about that tomorrow on Locked on Angels. Really looking forward to that conversation. We hope you'll come back and join us for that. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. When you said Byron Buxton, all I can think of is Pee Wee the Buxton. The Buxton are not, are not thieves. thieves. <laughs>